stopped at the uh, the subway stage with Steve Kilby of uh, Australian group The Church, one of the uh, I would say one of the foremost Australian rock bands to come out in the last 25 years or so. Um, Steve, I, I think what I want to ask you first of all before you're you're going up on a, a festival stage tonight, your band is renowned for creating uh, very layered and textured music. Um, and uh, often very ethereal, very thoughtful lyrics. When you come to do uh, a concert period, but a festival concert, do you take a different? Do you take a different? We rock, out. Up, we a different out. We rock out. Yeah, we um, we um, emphasize the rocky, noisy, feeding back stuff, and we do do we do do ethereal and stuff, but we um, we're wilder and looser and a lot more vibrant than, than our records would suggest. I think a lot of people are, are surprised by how beefy we are. Yeah. Now, do you have to just say leave some songs behind, or do you take some songs that might be more ethereal and take them in a different place when you go into a live setting like that? Then, uh, no, we. Uh, well, there's some ethereal songs like our big hit single "Under the Milky Way." We have to do. So we, I guess, we rock that up a little bit. We tend to go for the more rocky numbers. You guys have been around for a long time. Um, one of the things that I always liked about your sound as well, and. There's a little bit of psychedelia in, in your sound at times. What, what was it that attracted you to like psychedelic music and, and brought you to injecting that into your own? Well, I've always been attracted to psychedelic things, and another word for psychedelic is surrealistic, fantasy. I mean, um, my mother read me Alice in Wonderland when I was four. I thought that was a pretty psychedelic book. So when the Beatles stumbled upon psychedelia in 1967, my dad said, that's it, I'm not listening to the Beatles anymore. And I was like, this is it, this is when it's starting. And um, So was it a rebellion thing? My dad's now stopped, so I'm going to pick it up? Um, no, but I, could, uh, I, I realized it was a, a juncture where um, the old generation couldn't follow, which is what disappoints me about the young generation now, is that they haven't had that. They're still listening to Led Zeppelin. band over there of 16-year-old guys playing Led Zeppelin and Neil Young. Like in my day, when you were 16, you didn't play stuff that was 40 years old. So, um, now I've always been attracted to psychedelia, but not the, um, not the outward so much, but what it's really trying to get at. The, um, it's a dream state and stuff like that. It's interesting you mentioned that, that whole thing about the classic rock thing and the younger people, and you're right. I mean, when those songs were made, they were created so that the parents couldn't possibly listen to them and now the parents seem to be passing it on and the kids are, are lapping it up and, and not latching onto their own thing, which it seems like they should be. Well, when I was a kid, the most important thing rock had to be before anything else was original. Original and then get the other stuff in. And these days, originality is right down the bottom of the list. It's, so rock's becoming like the blues and becoming like folk and trad jazz. It's become locked within its stylistic parameters. And um, there's this golden period when the, the giants lived and breathed, Dylan, the Stones and the Beatles. You read any of those English monthlies, John Lennon, if John Lennon, if they find a letter that John Lennon wrote to Yoko Ono, that will take presence over Coldplay exploding in a plane crash or Trent Reznor having an overdose or something. So there's this golden period which everybody sort of worships and pays homage to, me included. But, but one of the problems with that is it's sort of, it's starting to, it's starting to like an old man, it's starting to lock up, starting to lose its flexibility and originality is kind of way down on the... If, I mean, if you can do a really good Led Zeppelin or Deep Purple or Black Sabbath kind of thing, you'll be big. But back in the day, if you were like someone else, people didn't like you. They were like, what the fuck? What about, uh, I mean, hip hop and, and trip hop and stuff like that seems that's like where some people are doing original. new things. Hip hop, trip hop, rap, that's original. That didn't come from the Beatles. Almost every other type of rock music that most white musicians have played in the th last 30 years has been directly from the Beatles. I don't like hip hop and trip hop and I don't understand it, but I take my hat off to it as an original art form. So what should we expect tonight up on stage from you guys? I mean, we talked about that at the start, a more visceral kind of show. Visceral, definitely it's going to be visceral. Um, I'm a lot more energetic than I used to be back in the day. Um, I don't know, it's really depending on the audience. Um, sometimes you go on and you think, oh, so we're going to kill it and then it all goes wrong. Uh, the other night we played in Connecticut, had a great theatre, everything was great. There was a guy, one man down the front, 
wanted to do something that the theatre didn't want him to do, which was hang his hands over the stage. And eventually the whole show came about him. And them take saying to him gently, no, you can't do that. And him come and go, Steve, I want to stand here. I pay my money. Disrupting the show, derailing it. Who can, who can, you know what I mean? So if we go on and the audience are kind of lukewarm to us, we might have a bad show. If we go on and they go nuts, then we'll have a great show. That's really, it's up to them. It's it, two, it has to be a two-way thing. Well, it's interesting because we had a Canadian group called Metric who was in here earlier this week that had an absolute connection with the audience and you could tell the, the show elevated to another place. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. We, um, we can't do it. We can't do it in a um, vacuum. We need, we need that. Or I, I need it. If I go on and the audience, I can't, I can't keep getting it out of myself. But if I get the encouragement, it's like having sex, you know? You start having sex with a woman, she's lying there like, you know, you're just going to want to get on and get off. But if she's going, uh, then you're going to start going, wow, you know, I'm going to invent some, I'm going to do it whatever I can. Pretty unfortunate metaphor, that one. Listen, thanks a lot for this. And we hope the audience is with you tonight and elevates the show. All right. Okay, thanks a lot.